Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Roberts, and you are listening to the Giving Town Podcast, where we share stories of hope and generosity in our wonderful community of Newburgh, Oregon, and the surrounding area. This podcast is sponsored by my real estate team, the Joyful Roberts Group, and we are licensed real estate brokers with Premier Property Group, LLC. We're passionate about serving our clients well and educating people about the many aspects of real estate, and we have a YouTube channel that does just that. So go ahead and check out our YouTube channel, which you can find in the links below. So today I'm interviewing Michelle Dietz, current finance manager and previous executive director at Newburgh Fish Emergency Service. Newburgh Fish is best known as the local food bank, but they do quite a bit more than that. So today we're gonna be learning about this incredible organization and how they work to serve our community. Well, thank you, Michelle, for joining me today. And I am looking forward to learning more about Newburgh Fish and how Newburgh Fish benefits our community. Thanks, Daniel. Um, I'm really excited to be on the program. And um, I've been really looking forward to this because there's some amazing change makers that you've had on in previous episodes, and it's been great to hear from them. Well, and Newburgh Fish has a pretty big role in our community. I think a lot of people have heard of it, but maybe don't quite know all that you guys do. Maybe they know you as a food bank, or maybe they know you as uh, soon pays uh, some of the bills on their behalf or something like that. But there's uh, a much bigger picture behind what you do. And so I'm looking forward to, and I actually have been for a while, Of I think you guys are kind of one of the core tenets of um, the, uh, the Newburgh ecosystem, I guess, that is responsible for helping a lot of our community in need. So first of all, let's just kind of get into what is Newburgh Fish, which then the whole name is Newburgh Fish Emergency Service, right? Correct. Yeah. So what is the, the history? How did this get started? So um, in 1970, way long time ago, a group of community members came together and said we wanted to be able to help um, our neighbors that have any sort of need. And um, at that time, there was an organization out of um, the UK that was called uh, FISH, Friends in Service to Humanity, that um, kind of took off in, in the US. And it's we're not affiliated with anyone um, on a national basis. We're our own entity. But we um, chose the name because we felt like it um, encompassed what what the original group was trying to do and um they started as really old school but they started a 24-hour hotline that okay. people could call and um with any sort of need that they had and many of the original calls were for babysitting or hmm. rides to the uh doctor's appointments um, lawn mowing home repairs for people who were unable to do it so okay. that was the original concept. Okay. And what is the significance of that name, Friends in Service to Humanity? I think, um, I'm not, I, well, I wasn't born yet in 1970. So I think their original theory on, um, choosing that name was that they wanted to be able to help everyone. And, um, so the humanity part was really important to, um, just the whole community, just involving anyone yeah. who, from volunteers to donors to um, clients, it it was um, just kind of something that encompassed every everyone. Yeah, well, and it's funny because a lot of people who have heard of fish or are familiar with Newburgh Fish just know it as fish and don't ha- haven't really looked into what's what's the fish like. What, what is that fish about? And I'm sure you guys have had some interesting. We have, we have. What people think it is. Sometimes we get calls for um, the fish market. We get confused with um, the fish market in town. And we've had actual calls from people who are looking for uh, emergency help for their pet fish. (laughs) So (laughs) it's pretty funny. I guess the collateral damage of having a a good name, but with an acronym when people don't fully look into it or an acrostic, I guess. But. (laughs) Okay. So uh, you talked a little bit about the the significance of the name and how right now it has kind of evolved a little bit from what it was intentionally, um, I guess, intended to be for like back in the UK. So what would you say your, your primary purpose is um, 
now here in, in Newburgh? So our primary purpose now is um, has evolved into a food pantry. And um, the reason for that, I think, is that many organizations um, started coming into Newburgh and Yamhill County. Um, Love, Inc. came in, and um, there's uh, many others that you've had on your program that have kind of se specialized services that fish is no longer needed in the areas that they may originally have helped people with. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so we kind of just whittled down to the, our main focus as being the food pantry. Okay. And what makes it, and it's, in some ways this may seem like an obvious question, but what makes it necessary for fish to exist? So, um, the, the initial, um, beginning of fish was to help people, um, who needed anything, whether um, it was a tangible a thing that they needed help with or um, something that was maybe a little bit more indir indirect. Um, but now with the food pantry, financial hardship is the main reason that we exist. It is um, to help people who are, are financially struggling um, just to survive. So who who's actually eligible for the services you guys provide? So our, um, we initially started uh, helping the Newburgh Dundee community. And in the 1980s, when we incorporated and became a nonprofit, we had to write specific bylaws that said who we were going to serve. And so at that time, they chose um, to keep the people that we serve within the Newburgh dis uh, school district boundaries. So Newburgh and Dundee, there's some outlying areas that we cover um, for certain things. Um, but for the most part, uh, we our food pantry is for Newburgh and Dundee residents. Um, there are many food banks, food pantries around Yam Yamhill County. So if someone does come from another area, we will fill a food box for them uh, based on their household size and then send them to um, hopefully give them the information that they need to be in contact with their own uh, food pantry. Okay. So it can be, it can be anyone that's what that's within the Newburgh. There were financial um, guidelines given to us by um, the Oregon food bank and okay, the federal okay. government. Uh, we currently are not asking for that information. Gotcha. Um, okay. And we haven't been for the last two years. Okay. And was that kind of with, with COVID you just said, okay, that's anyone? true. Yeah. Because one of the things that, as an organization that you want to be able to help everyone, but sometimes people will take advantage of certain things. And um, I'm sure that's kind of a difficult thing to manage of making sure you're giving people the help they need, but also being aware that there's certain people who try to game the system and, yes. and that kind of thing, which is just an unfortunate reality. It is an unfortunate reality sometimes. and it does, it does occur, um, but we would rather help the people that um, we really need to, to help than get stuck in those minor details. Yeah. What are some common myths that you would say people have about, um, whether about this organization or just about people who are struggling in general? So some of the myths that we have are um, based around feeling judged hmm. when they come um, to receive food assistance. It's a really hard thing to ask for help. And when people come, they they really feel um, vulnerable. And um, we really try to help preserve people's dignity. Some of our volunteers may be having a bad day, and so um, that may have come across negative, negatively to, to our clients. Um, but we really do work to try and um, make them feel like they are a valuable part of society and even uh, in their situation. So um, the other myths that, uh, that are out there are that we track people for immigration status mm. or um, to report them to the federal government for some reason. And that's not something that we do. We do ask for certain um, pieces of inf information. Most of the 
things that we ask for are to um, just create a relationship with the um, client. And um, we need to know household size. So we, uh, for um, the, t the size of food boxes that we give out, um, so we ask for those uh, household members. And um, that also helps create a relationship when we yeah. know that the their family's out there. And um, another myth would be that we only give out outdated food, hmm. food that's been expired. And it's not, we do. I mean, that's just a nature, nature of donations. We do receive close to um, expiring and expired food um, from many, many different places. It could be from the grocery store. Or it could be from an individual donor. We inspect and um, really work to only give out food that we know based on known standards. There's a use by and a best by mm -hmm. um, or best if used by date. Those are all really confusing terms. Um, but the best by and the best if used by dates are um, typically good for years after. Interesting. And they're edible food. It's nutritious. Um, it just, the quality may not be as as good. Um, our use by dates are more of like milk ex expiration dates and sure. things that actually spoil. So there's a, there's a lot of myths that yeah. come about with those. Which kind of seems like a tangent, but I, I think a lot of people are not familiar with that. Of what What is something that's actually good or not good? Because people look at something and say, oh, best by this date, and they toss it. Exactly. But um, where do those codes come from to where they, I mean, they have a date on there, but then they're, it almost seems like maybe they're arbitrary. Uh, I don't think that they're arbitrary, but I think that um, it, maybe it's a marketing thing where they <laughs> put a best by date on there and, and someone throws it out and has to buy a new can mm. because it's, they think it's no longer yeah. um, edible. But um, we, there's certain standards for things like, packaged tomato based products mm -hmm. last quite a long time. They can last up to five years past the date. Wow. We don't keep food that long. We usually keep at the most is two years. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. So I'll, when I go home, if I, if we have something that's expired, I'll say, no, 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 it could still last. For I please. eat expired food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if my wife would be happy that, I, that you told me that. Um, so, I mean, this, so we talked about who is eligible um, and some of the benefits on the food pantry side, but there's other aspects that you guys do besides just uh, giving food boxes out. Um, what are some of the other ways that you help people who come in? So we partner with um, a couple different organizations here in Newburgh. Um, one of them is the Newburgh Dundee Police Department, and we've worked with them on this program for over 10 years. And um, what we, what happens is an officer will identify someone in a crisis, um, in a crisis, and um, be able to give that person a one night's lodging voucher hmm. uh, for either the town and country motel or uh, the travel lodge, and that that and deliver that person to the location. Um, and there could be uh, the crisis could be anything from. Uh, domestic violence case to um, maybe they're just not able to care for themselves. They're out um, homeless and um, just need to be uh, need a bit of respite from from their situation. Uh, so the officer will deliver him, and then the motel will then uh, send us the voucher with the bill, and we'll directly pay the the motel. Okay. So uh, there's. The only money changing hands, the officer's not worried about it, and we are um, able to do that for them. Yeah. Um, we've done that program for over 10 years, and we've helped probably on average 25 individuals every year. Wow. So it's a real benefit, I think, for the police department to be able to um, help people in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, in those situations. Yeah. Um, the other partnership that we have is a bigger partnership with Love Inc. And um, we work with them to help. They identify people who are are struggling financially and we um, 
they also give out vouchers that they then send to us. And those vouchers can be for um, uh, utility bills like PGE or Northwest Natural Gas. And for once a year, we will pay um, up to $300 of a client's bill as long as it's uh, 80%, I think it's 80% of the total um, that we will pay. And that has really helped some people, especially with the financial management classes that uh, Love Inc. offers, um, to just kind of get out of debt and yeah. and relieve some of that, that burden that they're carrying around. Uh, we expanded that program um, in 2021 to include rent payments and which we do once a year for uh, up to $500 and then water utility bills, which we hadn't done before. And so the water utility bills are up to $100. Um, and it, se it seems to be a fairly uh, needed program. Yeah. And we see a lot of uh, new clients come through that way. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I do volunteering on the loving side and I, I come across many people who, uh, they they need the help <laughs> to say the least they've had and sometimes they've um gotten several hundred dollars or even over a thousand dollars of utility bill and they come in and they and this is kind of the hard part is when they they want everything to be they want everything to be covered they say i i need and sometimes there may be a certain hardship where someone just needs that that cover and they move on but what do you do when it's someone who it seems like a, a chronic thing you pay it once and then they're back the next month asking again well that is the reason that we do a once a year uh, yeah. because we're we really want to work on uh helping people but not um enabling mm. people so um and and we also work our mission is to work on an emergency basis right and it may right. be an emergency every year for this person um or our family uh but if we continued it, we feel like if we continued it for more than that year, um, it would just be enabling the the situation. So we we really work to um, be able to help people, but at the same time not enable them to get caught in this system. Right, and I know it's a can be a struggle for sure when when people come in with extenuating circumstances and and. You say, wow, I really wish that we could help more. But then kind of what we talked about before, you kind of have to draw that line sometimes of and have a policy because there will be those people who would just say, oh, well, I can just come in and have fish cover my bill month after month. And they kind of in their mind see that as a form of income. Um, and there's other maybe that they have a, a genuine need for a period of time. But, you know, you kind of have to mm -hmm. have that line somewhere. Yeah. And we yeah, we also feel like there is um other resources that may be available for these people as well and if we're all pulled together to help mm -hmm. people then um that that's how community works and mm -hmm. and so we're ha we're really glad that we're a part of that we also have um in those situations i mean yes it, it it's heartbreaking sometimes when we know about people who um have just get caught caught in a really bad situation and but we're not able to help um over what our policy states mm -hmm. and basically that is because we're a federally funded organization so we have to treat everyone equally and um regardless of the situation but we we can't discriminate for any reason or do something that would make someone think that we were discriminating against against them. So yeah. that's why we have set policies and, and rules along with our, um, you know, support system. So what are your hopes for someone when a client first comes to you or someone from the community comes and they, they have a need, what would your hope be of how they would use all the programs you have to offer? So when we have new clients show up, um, if if it's feasible, we will really try to connect them with the other organizations in the community. Of course, we would like to see them every month to get their uh, supplemental food box. That's um, something that we really feel like 
can make an impact in someone's life. We offer um, once a month food uh, boxes. People get choices um, in the nutritional categories that um, like near dairy and meat, uh, grains and fruits and vegetables. Um, all of those categories, they get choices. Um, those choices could be based on their preferences. They could be based on their cultural needs or dietary needs. And um, so that when they come and see us, we, we really would like to create that relationship that they can count on us to receive that once a month help that just alleviates some of that burden, that financial burden that they're, they're feeling. And with the choice uh, shopping style pantry that we have, um, we really hope that they're thinking like they're going to the grocery store. Of course, it's not the same. We don't, we don't have the consistency in products and we don't have thousands of products on our shelves, but we also give them a choice and we hope that that uh, restores some dignity that they, mm. that they probably need in the situation that they're in. Yeah. Um, and then besides that, we do try to connect them with Loving and, and other organizations that can help them further. Okay. And you mentioned the food boxes that people get that it's supplemental. So what is the the function of that? How much food does someone get? So the supplemental part is we can offer up to probably a week's worth of food once a month. So it would be um, equivalent to them going to the grocery store for that week and, and picking up that uh, amount of food. And it's based on their household size. So one to two people will get less than obviously a eight plus family household. So Okay. One of the things that we had talked about earlier um, was in the how, in in part of the how and part of the when people come. So uh, can you explain that a little bit? Yes. So we, um, people come to see us for food assistance when they're desperate. And um, we find that they're in a, they find themselves in a situation where they're at the end of the month and are not even at the end of the month, but end of their paycheck. And they're not uh, able to go to the store and get food to feed their themselves or their family. And um, I think it's a, a new and maybe different way of thinking um, that we would like them to come see us first. Come to us, uh, get a food box from us save some of that money um, that you might need for an emergency situation that mm. happens um, towards the end of the month. Yeah. And um, and if you don't, great. But uh, it's really um, discouraging for people when they are desperate and, and we're here, we're ready to serve. And uh, we have plenty of food on our shelves to serve um, people in the community that, that really maybe need to redirect some of their, their finances. Well, a lot of people come in, for example, at, at Love Inc., a lot of people come in and they, um, or maybe people who don't even come in, but they assume they're not going to qualify. I didn't know at one point our family, you know, we didn't have the best income. I know many people who um, probably qualify for getting all kinds of, of services and they're struggling so much to make ends meet. Do you know, for say like a family of four, uh, do you know what the income requirements would be for, for them to be able to qualify? Or is it based on more than just income? Uh, no, it's based on income and there are numbers out there. I don't have them in front oh, okay. of me, but it's actually pretty high. Um, the income um, for a family of four is fairly high. And um so there would be a lot of people that would be eligible for food assistance. However, since, since um, two years ago, we kind of revised our, our way of um, delivering food to clients um, due to COVID. We, we don't ask for a signed um, confirmation that mm -hmm. what people make. So we're not really requiring that at the, at the present. So. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like you mentioned earlier, they just have shame. Like, oh, well, if I if I go, you know, that makes me one of those people. They kind of have it as this, like, oh, if someone who goes to a food bank is just, you know, and they have native connotations in their head. Um, and that's something that I would like to be able 
to um, I guess kind of alleviate some of the the shame and, and guilt uh, uh, along with coming and getting help when you need it and saying that's what you guys are here for. <laughs> There's it's yep. a service that's available for people and um and there's no there's no shame in in coming and getting food or or using whatever's available we would hope that there wouldn't be shame and our receptionists that um take clients orders um talk to the clients about what their needs are and um they're really friendly ladies who just want to help and yeah so i hope that there wouldn't be shame yeah I understand when there is. One of the more present issues that we're facing here in kind of the first half of 2022 is inflation. And I'm sure that has affected you guys as much as many others as someone who you know, deals directly with food. Yes. So our costs are up definitely. And we um, we have seen an increase in clientele, uh, which we kind of expect to continue Um and but we're we're here and like I said before we're ready uh, forever for whoever needs uh, to come to us and um, but yeah it kind of goes back to that principle well you could come to the food bank mm-hmm. and be able to pay for your gas yeah right? you know so um, come to us first and 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 utilize our free food and yeah yeah and that's maybe something for people listening and. Again, a lot of the people listening to this, maybe people that never have need of, of these services, but maybe that know someone and saying, hey, gas is really expensive. Food's really expensive. Go to the food bank and just like you said, get food. It's not, um, I mean, it's it's just a, a, adds a buffer in, in your paycheck. And maybe even some people uh, are on, on food stamps. Maybe they're not on the SNAP benefits, um, but coming here and just saying, hey, it's it, we get it's hard right now and come get the help that's available so that you can help your family in the other ways that you need to or get out of debt, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a, an important message. What are other ways that people can get involved? Um, okay, so we have donors and we have volunteers and um, we, we really, s- our volunteers are kind of set um because we have individualized service for um when we fill the food boxes it's not the same for everyone it's a choice we have a lot of training involved with that so we do ask for volunteers that can commit to a specific day and time um for the you know for the time for as long as they can of course we understand that people move in and out of the area and then their jobs change or whatever their situation is. But we do just kind of ask for volunteers who are, are set to commit um, more than probably. It's probably once a week would be our, our minimum. Um, we, if, the, if people would like to volunteer, our, uh, they can email us at newbergfish at frontier.com. Um, we have a volunteer coordinator that would then be in contact with them. Um, to find out their best fit their, um, for days and times and position-wise. We have warehouse workers, stocking shelves. We have drivers uh, picking up and delivering food. We have um, office workers, um, finance and um, receptionists. So there's a lot of different kinds of positions for people um, to maybe find it. If you have a passion for serving food and 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 serving people then this is your place yeah and you guys accept donations from anyone so donations come in all sorts of different forms we get food donations from grocery stores we get individual food donations we get um people who would like to garden and farmers will give us their extra produce uh we have monetary donations and we have um People who donate monthly, we have people who donate once a year. So there's a lot of different different ways. We have on our website, newbergfish.org, we have a button that you can donate online. Um, it's It goes through donorbox.org. So all of that information is just um, click on the box and it'll take you through that. We receive checks in the mail. 
sometimes people just drop off cash. Um, so it, there's just a numerous ways to um, help us. Do you guys find that there's certain types of foods you're consistently in need of? Um, I would say that the those kinds of things would be canned meats. Um, protein is a really big um, need. It's it, yeah. It's um, much better than a pack of ramen, but <laughs> we can use ramen too. Um, we, but canned meat. Uh, another surprising one is cooking oil and flour. Um, people don't normally think of giving out cooking oil to a food pantry. Um, cereals, oatmeals, uh, pastas, things like that are, are usually pretty popular. Okay. Yeah. And then one of the things we had talked about before we were recording is that there are people who maybe don't have access to a kitchen or or a can opener, or a way to actually prepare food. So maybe types of foods that are, are you can just open it and eat it rather than having to cook it and prepare it. Right. So we do have clients that come to us um, that don't have an address, that they're unhoused and um, maybe are just walking around with a backpack, don't have a kitchen to prepare the food. So um, we try to work with that client to, to find out what would suit them best. And um, we've given out can openers with with food and we try to um, find the food with pop top um, cans or uh, things like uh, granola bars, things that are easy, easily uh, opened and prepared. Yeah. And I'm, I know many people really appreciate that when, <laughs> when they can come in and get, um, get that at the time that they need it. Well, thank you, Michelle, for sharing. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we close? Uh, the one thing that I would like to say is just a big thank you to all of our volunteers, past, present, and future. We are a 100% volunteer organization. We've never had a paid employee. And even our executive director doesn't get paid. Oh, wow. And um, I think when people learn that, they're like, huh, that's that's different. We've never heard of that before. But for over 50 years, we've, we've worked as a volunteer organization and um, I'm really proud of everyone and what they do um, to help our community and I know that none of them are here to get recognition they would be the last per people to come and say hey look at me but uh, it's nice to get a thank you every once in a while well and I will say thank you as well because like I mentioned at the very beginning this is an extremely um, needed and probably underutilized aspect of um our community, but I know the people who have received help really appreciate it. So thank you, Michelle, for your time and look forward to getting the word out about Newbrick Fish. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned something new about Newbrick Fish Emergency Service. Uh, one of the things I want to share is that a lot of people are really struggling right now uh, with higher gas prices, high food prices, and inflation. A lot of people are really struggling to make ends meet and don't know about the service that uh, Newberg Fish provides. So I would like to ask you to please share this episode with your friends and your neighbors, just to make sure that everyone who needs this service knows about it. Um, I think this service is really just not utilized to its full capacity. And that was one of the things that Michelle mentioned. So as much as we can get the word out to make sure that people who could use it are getting the food they need so that they can have money left over to do the other things um, and spend the money on the other things that they really need to uh, would really benefit our community. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a five-star rating and also make sure you subscribe so that you're not missing each episode as it comes out, which is every other week. Thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next episode.